Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Saturday evening. I'm just chilling. It's been a long day. Looks like we got kind of like a yellow tint, a little sepia tone on the camera. We'll just have to go with it. I don't know why it's projecting that way. Kind of makes me feel like we're in a 1970s movie. I should have wore a tie-dye shirt. Let's talk about confidence. I was talking about confidence just about an hour or two ago with someone that I was doing coaching with. And confidence is really being able to take risks, not being too emotionally attached to the outcome. A lot of people who are unconfident are really emotionally attached to outcomes. So if they don't get the outcome that they wanted, they can get really upset. You go and ask a woman uh, for her phone number or ask her out or whatever, approach her, and she rejects you, bats you away like you're a tennis ball. It's a pickleball. They built a pickleball stadium, not just a court, a pickleball stadium, like a half a mile from my house. It's the largest pickleball place in the goddamn world. I don't even know what fucking pickleball is. It looks ridiculous. That's a different video. Let's say you get rejected and you walk back triggered because now you're thinking about every rejection you've ever had and you tell yourself, well, I'm not doing that again. Some people really have thick skin and they can take rejection. That's an art form. You know who's good at taking rejection are salesmen. When you do a lot of hard selling, cold calling, where the customer, the lead that you're calling or that you're uh, hitting up, they're not primed. They are just minding their own business and you're trying to sell them something that they don't want. You are gonna get rejected most of the time. That becomes a numbers game. But what it teaches you is that you always just go on to the next. The second you've lost your, 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 your chance to sell this person, you just move on. You give a first effort, a second effort, you never go beyond a third effort. This is a sales rule. A third effort is a stretch. You never go past a third effort, you're done. Usually a second effort you can pretty much tell. If they've rejected your second effort, eh, you know. Some people are really relentless. And you can get someone on a third effort if you're creative. But, you know, that's just sales stuff. We can talk about that later. But it's interesting to me how confidence works. Because I witness myself highly confident in some areas and then not so confident in other areas. And the skill should be transferable. In fact, the action, if you look at it, is the same. So, for, say, for example, I'm highly confident when I promote myself in business. And I have been for many years, and I've made many deals, big deals, with people that I've just approached at functions, at motorcycle rallies. Oh, I've approached Indy and Larry, and uh, who else? Um, Arlen Ness, the guy who owned As Kicker from Arizona, uh, making deals with all of them. Just, hey, how you doing? Ross Meyer, when he was alive, rest in peace, Ross Meyer. A whole bunch of people would just tap them on the shoulder, walk up to them, hey, I'm Sky, introduce myself, we start talking, business card, handshake, let's make a deal, let's do business, bam, I got a foot in the door. Now, I'm relentless with that. And if I get rejected, sometimes people don't respond, sometimes people aren't ready, you never know what they're going through, but I planted a seed, you never know until you try. Even if they are like, no, they take my card and throw it away. No one's ever done that. <laughs> I'd probably punch them in the face. But even if they did, I honestly don't care. I don't care. Move on to the next, because I've been taught with sales. You just always go on to the next. Then fuck you then. There's other people. <laughs> but with women, a whole different story. It's the same thing. Approach a person, introduce yourself, promote yourself a little bit, try to make a deal with them, a deal, you know, get their phone number or go on a date, whatever the motivation is. Oh, that makes me very intimidated. I can get all flustered, walk up to them and be all, you know, act like an idiot. 
And I had to think about this, philosophize on it. What's that about? Why isn't the skill transferable? Why could I be really good at one, doing it in one way and not really good at doing it in another way? And it's the same thing. And what I've come down to with confidence is that it really has to do with your ability to handle people laughing at you, to have a thick skin, to handle guilt, shame, rejection, negativity, non-acceptance, and all those things that t are tied to failure. And to not really trip out on failure. Yeah, who cares? Right? And when you have that strong emotional attachment to the outcome. You set yourself up for suffering when you can't move on quickly and you dwell on it and then you let that fester into a wound. I'm a loser. I'm not worthy. No one will ever love me. Whatever you start thinking. You get into that repetitive, that same loop that you've been in for so many years. Some people have this loop of negativity that they just beat themselves up with. You know, that's where it's a problem. That, that, that is the heart of unconfidence, it is this inability to step into the unknown without the competence, because confidence and competence are similar, but they're different. To step into the unknown without the competence, without the skill, you don't really know if you can handle this. You might fail, but to do it anyways, and to do it with this kind of attack mode. You know, when you're talking about I'm being unconfident, you're really talking about fear. Fear is fascinating. I've been thinking about fear, philosophizing on fear for ages. I was watching these paranormal videos on YouTube. Sometimes I like ghost videos. I haven't really decided what I believe in ghosts yet. I'm on the fence with the whole ghost thing. I have ghost stories though. I should tell a couple ghost stories sometime. And you know, if you look at it black and white, you can have two different ways that you can go downstairs into that basement when you've heard that scary noise and you have to walk in to the darkness to go and see what it is. You could stand there terrified with your imagination going and thinking when I step into those shadows, it could be the boogeyman, it could be, you know, a, a monster, it could be the devil, it could be my certain doom. And you could go into it like that, inching forward, like a little rabbit ready to jump back at any moment. Or you have the other option, we're just talking about two. You could smash down those stairs, walk confidently stomping into that dark room knowing that no matter what's down there, you are gonna break it in half. You're in my house, who is it? The devil, the boogeyman, chupacabra? You're fucking dead, chupacabra. I'm down here to fuck you up. Who is it? Bigfoot? You're fucked, Bigfoot. The Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> Who's down in my basement? If you had the choice, those are the only two choices, to, to be terrified of going into the unknown or to march into it thinking, damn right, I'm fucking badass. I can handle this no matter what. I'd rather go into it the, the, with confidence. Now, the rabbit who dashes from bush to bush, the metaphor that Jordan Peterson uses, will always come up with reasons why being timid, being safe, and holding back in life is the better move. Well, what if this happens? What if I can't afford it? I can't start that business because this, because that. they're always coming up with a reason why. And a lot of times your excuses, what is it, Jocko Willenick? Oh, we're going around the YouTube today quoting people. Jocko Willenick says, all your excuses are lies. Damn right they are. Lies you tell yourself. You know, interesting thing about confidence with women, it's really just a numbers game. If you can get over the rejection, like the salesman, 
you can learn to be successful with women. You have to play to win. I used to know these guys. These guys were just such rodents. They looked like rats, long, stringy, unwashed hair, big noses, skinny. They were just nasty trailer trash, metalhead dudes. They lived in Ocean City, Maryland. Not Ocean City, New Jersey. Ocean City, Maryland. Little party town. Long boardwalk. Old boardwalk. We used to go there when I was younger. All the way on the end of the Ocean City, Maryland boardwalk down, way down on the end, the last street, the very last street, I forget what it's actually called, but everybody used to call it Freak Street. Freak, like freak from a circus, because that's where all the heads hung out at. All the metalheads, all the hippies, all the punks, they all hung out on Freak Street at the end of the boardwalk. So you go there on a Saturday night during the summer, Friday night during the summer, packed, Freak Street was packed. And right there because they had rides and all kinds of stuff because it's a boardwalk there was always you could always find these two or three little fucking rodent trailer trash metalhead dudes just hounding the women walking by hey baby hey baby hey baby you want to fuck hey baby hey baby you want to fuck you want to fuck me hey baby nice ass nice tits hey baby these guys would get slapped yelled at spit on Guys' boyfriends would chase them off. These guys would get fucked with relentlessly. And I went up to them one day, and I was just, because you see them there. Every weekend, we'd go and party, and we'd, ha we'd go down to Freak Street. Let's go see what's happening on Freak Street. And there those guys were, man, those fucking little rodents. And I went up to one of them one time to bum a cigarette or something, and uh, I asked him, I was like, dude, what the fuck, man? I always see you guys here, and you're always hounding these chicks, and you don't ever get any of them. And he looked at me, little fucking idiot, his eyes are like, couldn't even look at you straight. Looks like he's inbred. He looks at me, and he's like, bro, you're wrong. He's like, this works. He's like, I get slapped, I get made fun of, I get yelled at. I get rejected a hundred times, but I ask like 120 chicks, I get pussy every night. Every time I come here, I go home with a chick. There's always that one chick who likes it. And she's like, yeah, I wanna go home, or here's my number. Most of them don't. And he's just like, I've gotten used to the rejection. The rejection means nothing. I laugh at it. We make fun, we, we have a good time later laughing at all the chicks rejecting us. And I, I thought it was funny. I'm not gonna try that tactic. Because I'm not some trailer trash rodent. But I understood it that you can't trip out on this shit, man. You just have to have thick skin. Laugh at the fucking failures and move forward. Food for thought.